season of the Wine O'Clock Show, proudly brought to you by Tom's Cap Vineyard Retreat. Escape to Tom's Cap. Carolyn's First National Real Estate, the number one choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast. And the Olsen Hotel Art Series, right in the heart of Chapel Street. Jared Woodgate, welcome Hello. to the Wine O'Clock Show. Thank you, Tam. And, it's nice um, to be here. Thanks for inviting uh -huh. us out to your beautiful yeah, to say, vineyard. Yeah. My vineyard. No, yeah, yes. yeah, your home, and because you're a major sponsor this year, which we're grateful and thankful for. Yeah, so we thought we'd better right. come out and pay you a visit. Yes, and you're happy so far. Oh, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. Been walking around. I'm in love. I'm in love. I think I might stay. Yeah. Can we just well, leave this couch here for me, and I'll just This can here. stay. The old packers are on their yeah. way. <laughs> Kookaburra will swing by soon. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Now, we're going to um, crack this beautiful rosé. Yes, yeah. we are. Let's this taste is, test the merchandise. This is actually our new 2018 rosé, so we're very happy because, I mean, you're trying it on the show, but the rosé is the one that you want to be able to drink. Yes. And this, you don't drink it with ice. No, don't, don't add ice. No, don't add ice. People add ice, Thanks, and it's just it waters it down, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, but the rosé is really it's easy to drink. It's becoming popular rosé, isn't it? Yes, even the boys are drinking it because, yeah. I mean, guys are like, oh, I can't be drinking that. That's a girl's yeah, drink. Yeah, it's a girl's drink. Well, it's not. You go down to Portsy Sorrento. Cheers. Guys, drink it. Mm. Cheers. Ching ching. Yeah, it was a good sound, wasn't it? Mmm. Mmm. Is it a good summer? Oh. Oh, yeah. Divine. Yeah. Mm, Slightly peachy. Yeah. And the colour. Uh, I mean, it's amazing how they make it with the skin grapes. Mm. The skins of the red. Mmm. Mm. Nice. Yeah, so. This is our new fave for the weddings. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to get straight to the point. Straight to the point. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Let's just let's just rip the band. -aid off. Yes, just let's do it. Why not? We're I've gonna... had my first sip of wine. Yeah, you might need a few more mouthfuls after yeah. the question. I'll just take the bottle. Yeah, yeah. no one will judge. We're going to get straight into the bachelor talk, yes. the bachelorette. Um, you've had a big 2018 with um, bachelorette and then Bachelor in Paradise. <laughs> yeah. What was it about the show, let's start with The Bachelorette, that you, want, that you wanted to go on? Why did you want to go on something like that? Well, I actually have my dad to thank for that. Oh, do you? Um, <laughs> him. I, okay, so I, I got poached at my local pub and they had asked if I wanted to sign up for The Bachelor and I said, no, nah, it's too many women. I, yeah. I just want to fall in love with one girl mm. and I'd be happy. Uh, and then next minute I received an email saying, can you sign up? Mm. And I said, no. And dad's like, come on, I'll even fill it out for you. Mm -hmm. So he was pushing and he pushed, took me to all my appointments and all the meetings. And yeah, I was almost about to say, no, I'm not doing it. And then I flew over to Hong Kong to hang out with my sister. And they rang me just before I got on my plane saying, you're in. Right. And that it was a day after I'd put my application in. Did you know who the bachelorette was going to be when you'd filled in your app? Not when I filled it in, no, okay. but then when I had my first meeting, mm. um, they give you a debrief and they pick you out of a group, mm. and they told us. Yeah. So did, could you have that option then to go, yeah, no, I'm good. We did, yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely had the option. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, so amongst a normal person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and th that's what we are, just because we've been on TV or mm. we've sung or we've acted, we're still normal people. Yeah, yeah. Not that I can sing or act, <laughs> but that's, that's why I was on The you Bachelorette. You can wine. <laughs> yes, yes, I can. Thank you. <laughs> So looking back over your season of The Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise, is there anything that you would do differently? I wouldn't do anything differently. There's no point. Um, I went in there being who I was and came out the other side an even better person mm. for being who I wanted to be. And this is just who I am. Mm. Yep. And I know people didn't like who I, I mean, they said I was too full on or I was too uh, clingy and weird and all that. Well, you know what? It's how I was brought up. Mm. But some, like, when you think about it, like, some women actually do want to know how men feel. They mm. don't want to, you know, be singing and guessing. So, you know, for me, that emotion, that emotional side of you is what sometimes women want to see. Well, that's right. You've got to let your guard down. Mm. 
if you don't let your guard down and, and allow them in a yep. little bit, there's no point because yes, that the suitor is there to find their love mm. and their partner, but I'm also there to make sure that I'm getting enough out of this to know that at the end of it, mm. I'm happy with where I was. It's a hard environment to be in, I think, that whole 20 men in a house vying for the one woman's attention. How, like, I mean, the testosterone yeah. goes, how hard is it? It is intense because yep. when you first meet them all and you're like, oh, this is all right, this could be, you know, have a few drinks, have a bit of party, cool. Third day in, first guy gets the date, no, nah, no more friends. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just like, Game on. <laughs> oh, I want this, I want this rose, or I want that date, or I want to have the first kiss. And it's like, whoa, calm down. Yeah. Don't plan it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when I, I went a little bit different. I, yeah, because I got the first date and I got the first kiss. Mm. And that's what intensified it for me and also intensified it for them because the other boys wanted to be there. Mm. Mm. So, and, and then people start picking their friends and sticking close to who they should. And, yep. Yep. Yeah. If there people put into the show, I, I had Tim, Bachelor, uh, Tim Robards on, he was the first Bachelor years ago, and he said that out of like the 20 women he had to choose from, really only five of them met like his criteria. The other were just sort of put in for drama and effect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm, thought so. Um, is there anything that you did or said on the show that you regretted? Um, no. No? No, I think I, I said everything that I would normally say to a group of friends or around family. Um, maybe when, uh, oh, yeah, maybe when the producers cut me off from drinking because they said I had too much wine, um, maybe I'd then, you know, arc up and get a little bit offended. Yep. Because obviously I, I like wine. Yes. Uh, you have a vineyard. Of course you do. So, yeah, apologies to the uh, producers that had to deal with me at that, at that time. Uh, but other than that, no. Mm. I left there happy with whatever I've done. You came back to do it all again mm. on Bachelor in Paradise. It's a totally different platform from the show, uh, from Bachelor and Bachelorette. What were some of the highs and lows of Bachelor in Paradise? Uh, okay, so the high in Bachelor in Paradise was the fact that we could make the call. Yeah. We had the power of the rose. Or I walked in there with a date card and I was able to pick who I wanted to go mm. on that date with. Um, mm. And funnily enough, it was Ellie, which was a bachelorette. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, you've got to tick those boxes in your own mind. Mm. You've got to pick those people in Bachelor in Paradise that you feel that you can't have that connection with, but you need to be solid on why you're doing it. Mm. And then at the end of it, then you find out what you really want in life. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's a different atmosphere. Mm. Again, you can go paddle boarding, swimming, go to the bar, yep. you've got your own chefs, yep. ate so much food. Mm. Uh, but the dates were pretty cool. Yep. And you get to spend that time with the people like in the bus on the way to the date yep. or on the way home, you get to hang out with that girl or guy that you've gone on the date with. Mm, mm. Not like The Bachelorette where you get pulled away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I guess with Paradise too, the thing I loved is that it was alternate. So like one one yes. week the boys had all the power, I guess the second week or second night the girls had all the power and that just makes the dynamic so much more intense. Unless we had um, a random person walk in and then that put the girls back into power. Yeah, okay. So yeah. if there were more guys, the second week, the girls would have that power again. Oh, so the boys really? would be like, yeah, we've got the power of the rose. And then all of a sudden, guys rock up mm. and the boys are like, oh, great. <laughs> I regret saying what I just said. Yeah. Because they do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they dig themselves a hole. Mm. We always, guys dig themselves a hole all the time. I'm always doing it with mum. Yeah. <laughs> like, Without even meaning it, but that's that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah. What has been, um, I mean, being on the series, what has it taught you as a person? Um, in a good way, it's taught me that just not to hold back and just continue being who I am. Mm. Uh, don't be afraid to show people a soft side to a guy. Mm. Um, I mean, we're allowed to cry just as much as the next girl. Yep. And we're allowed to put all our emotions on the table if we want. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. I kind of forgot the question I was going on about this whole love thing. <laughs> what's it taught you? No, what is it? Um, what's it taught you? But I mean, at the nation's heart. Well, I know mine did, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the nation's heart broke when Sophie didn't choose you on The Bachelor, and to see that emotion. Do they give yeah. you support afterwards? 
to help you through that process of, you know, obviously a very upsetting process. Yeah, it's called a bar and an open tab. <laughs> yeah. Um, Drinks on us, here's a card. Yeah, yeah. Here's the corporate yeah. card. And then, yeah, I started talking about going out to some random nightclub as well and they're like, they had to watch me. <laughs> oh, really? But then I just passed out on the bed anyway, so. So they don't give you counselling or anything? Oh, they give us counselling, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get yeah. counselling, but they're not going to give you counselling the first time because once Sophie sends you on your way, mm. you're on a boat for half an hour before you can get back to your hotel mm. and then you get to chill out. Yeah. So it's still a bit of a rush and then you get to call your parents and then, yeah, it's full on. Was, but, that, a, um, was that a hard, it was hard phone call to make? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't easy. I remember that phone call and mm. my dad still, my mum and dad still remember the phone call mm. to the point where it was like, they're going to try and come to me. Yeah. But it, it is, it is It'd be nothing really... more heartbreaking than seeing your son in so much pain. Well, the fact that they had, yeah, they hadn't seen it, but they're yeah. like, oh, because I thought I was going in the first week. Mm, mm. I thought, it's all right. Yeah, she's not gonna <laughs> I'm not going to hang around. Like, I'm just some random dude yeah. uh, that doesn't know where he's going. Uh, but, yeah, it's it was intense and it was hard for me, but it was harder for my family to obviously hear it and not mm. be there for me. Mm. Mm. So hopefully, yeah, well, they don't want to see me go through that again, which is my mum, yeah. as you saw before, is very protective. She is. She's like, what's he saying? She was like what? giving me the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's, yeah. So, yeah. What I questions are you asking him? I thought it was for me, but no, it was definitely for you. Um, as No, but she was very protective when Sophie came here as well. Mm. Mm. And I think you do as a mum. Are you the only child? No, I've got a no. sister, oh, yeah, yeah. which is on her way up oh, yeah. soon. Oh, yeah, with your with a, yeah, yeah, with my nephew. So the big question, mm -hmm. are you still single or are you taken? Still single. Still single? Still single. And ready to mingle? Ready to mingle, but <laughs> you know what? I've decided that now that I've gone out and done all that, mm. I'm not going to go look for it. Mm. I'd, I'd like to continue working here peacefully, but also enjoy my time in Melbourne. Mm. And I, I don't want to plan on a plan of going on a date and meeting someone. Mm. I want it to happen naturally. Naturally, yep. And I think that's, that's probably the... As you asked before, is there anything I'd change? Maybe that would be the way to go. Maybe if I was in the right headspace of, okay, let's it come to me. Yep. But instead, I'm, I was very eager to have a relationship then. Mm, mm. And now I just, I, I do want the one girl in my life that's going to be there for the rest. Uh, and it's, it will take time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I think they've too, you've got to find that right, the right woman that is going to appreciate all this glorious and beauty of this vineyard you hear. Yes, and in a way, if we're married for 20 years, mm. then it'd be great because it's a good escape for me and it's a good escape for her. Yep. But in a new relationship, it, it makes it harder because you've got to try and justify the time you spend out here and spend mm. in Melbourne. Mm. And I mean, if I was with a girl that was interstate, that'd be even harder. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, at the back of my mind with Sophie, I'm like, oh. How's this... it all going to work logistically? Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, and can I give to her what she wants from me, mm. which was a yes, but work around it. But then even being in relationship with Kira, mm. like the amount of times that Kira would come out here and, you know, we'd, we'd try and have that relationship. But I mean, when she's here, I would get distracted because she's yeah. a very distracting girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, really? basically, yeah, <laughs> she can be, she can be. Um, and I think that out here is like, it's a profession. It's my job yeah, now. Yeah, it's your job. So I need to be mindful of that. Mm. And it's not like when I was younger where you could just randomly, I don't know if I could say this, but randomly bring a girl up that you like yep. for a weekend and then think nothing of it yep. because we're both young. Yep. But now, as soon as I bring a girl to the vineyard, it's like... Is he serious about her? Is yeah, he that's right. Down? So is I want to make yet? sure that who I bring here next is going to be that the one. Yeah, otherwise Anne will be like... Yeah, watching, exactly. Watching you. Exactly right. <laughs> so, hence why I am a very big family man yep. and have a lot of friends. Yeah, yeah. That have a lot of wives and they have kids, and I'm just that. I think I'm the only single guy out of our group now. Really? Mm. 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 Yep. My question was going to be, and I probably already know now the answer, but if you were to ask to be the bachelor, would you? Uh, look, right now, at this time of year, I'm thinking work. Mm. Uh, if they were to come to me and it was the right time, maybe. But mm. I, as I said, I don't want to force me yep. having to try and find someone. As you said, Tim, he had maybe five girls out mm. of the 20. Mm. Well, 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's scary as well. Yep. What if you get there and there's literally two people and the rest are just there yeah, for... you've got to go through the process. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, do you want to show me a little bit around this... Oh, love to. ...amazing vineyard? Yes. And, well, the um, place is ours. We can yeah, go anywhere. We've got the whole place to ourselves. Horse and cart. Yeah. Well, we can. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. If only. <laughs> Where do you want to go? We'll start... We'll start in the... the vines. Yeah. Let's yeah, do it. Done. Cheers. Let's go have a look. Cheers. Jared, we're back here in your cellar door. Yeah. We're going to talk about wines now. We've just had a beautiful walk through your vineyard and we've seen the amazing accommodation. I guess tell us a little bit about what people can do when they come out to the, the wine or vineyard first. Yeah, uh, basically when they come out here, all we want them to do is enjoy themselves, relax. Uh, we'll do everything for them. Well, not me, but Anne and Graham in the kitchen will do everything for them. Um, but when they come out here, they can have a nice late lunch and then they can go up to their spa cottage and have a massive cheese platter like this one and mm. drink wine until their heart's content and relax. Yep. Switch off, no reception, just be yes, with nature. No phone reception. Yeah, up here, which be is with great. nature, be yep. with the wine and enjoy each other's yep. company. Can they wander through the vineyards and, they and can check go things out? Anywhere they want. I normally uh, tell them if they're going to go through a gate, to shut a gate. Yeah, yeah. That's all you've got to do. Yeah. Because we've got a lot of animals, we've got the alpacas, the mm. cows. How yep. many nights of accommodation can they stay? Can they stay like for like a week seven or? Seven days a week if wow. they want. Uh, when wedding season picks up, mm. uh, the, the wedding party sometimes takes the accommodation. Mm. Other than that, it's available. Yeah, fantastic. And if they want to escape without anybody here during the week's perfect because mm. the kitchen's not even open. It's mm. just me working in the yeah. vines. The thing I love is that you are only really just over two hour drive from Melbourne, which isn't a lot when you think about when you have to travel overseas to come to this beautiful escape in the country. Exactly. You've got to go through, it takes two hours to get through customs, so <laughs> exactly. you might as well drive out here. Two hour drive, it's actually a beautiful drive out here. Yes. And then, you know, stay the week, beautiful. We're going to have a little uh, showing of the wines that you yeah, fantastic. sell and make and grow out here. So walk us through, I guess it's party season. It is and party season. It's party summertime. season. It's Bring summertime. It yep. um, and we are all for throwing big, um, lavish parties at our homes, whether it be Christmas, nearly New Year's. So what's a great, some great wines to have with beautiful cheese platters? Okay, well, to start with, depending who's um, paying the bill. Yes. But normally it's, uh, you want to start with a nice bubbly or a mm. nice sparkling. So the sparkling rosé is my favourite at the moment because it's nice to actually... You open it up, people are like, ooh, I don't know about it. Mm. And then they try it and they want the bottle to themselves. Yep. So you know you've succeeded. Uh, if you ever take bad wine to a party... You won't get invited back. No. <laughs> so if you don't like them, take a horrible wine. If you like them, take our wine. Yep. Uh, because people do love it. Mm. Uh, mm. Wedding season now, they constantly drink it. Yeah, yeah. And yep. uh, for me, I, I, I love the sparkling rosé. We've got a sparkling chardonnay as well. Mm. It's a nice start. Is Chardonnay still quite a popular drop? It's back in. Yep. It's, I don't know what's happened. The last three years uh, when we've been selling the Shardy, we sold out of it, but we were struggling to get rid of it. Mm, mm. And now that we've just started making it again, um, we don't have enough to keep Just up right. with the yeah. demand. Mm. And that's why we've gone full production the last year. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about what a few cheeses and yummy goods we've got here. Definitely. Okay, so we've got uh, our own olives. Yep. Uh, they're from our olive trees and I believe these are the 2016 and they just sit in olive oil or brine in a container mm. and then I was surprised you know you showed me the olives before and I was surprised that they actually sit around they can mm. sit around for years yes well yes they, these ones are popular very yeah. popular uh, one thing I forget to tell people though they've got pips yeah so, so don't sure crunch down too hard don't crunch down I've done that to my mates a lot and they don't go <laughs> near lose olives. A tooth. Hmm. Yes, um, so they're local. Now the raspberries are also local, mm. um, which are very super fresh. Yep. So good, just off the tree. Um, got some uh, of our old grapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, just plucked them off the vine. Just delicious grapes that people can choose to eat or not. I always thought it was just decoration. Mm. 
Um, we've got the manchego. Yes. Which is a beautiful crummy cheese. Uh, you've got the Irish blue cheese, which is quite powerful. Mm, mm. Um, you've got the quince paste. On sorrel. On sorrel, yes. yes. So that's actually an edible weed. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it just looks good, it does. Yep. Adds to the board. Uh, and then duff and moi. Yep. And oh, I've got to remember the last one. It's like a cheddar, it's a nutty cheddar cheese. It's probably the easiest one to remember, and I forgot. <laughs> That's that right. doesn't matter. No. Uh, they all but taste it tastes good. good. Yes. Uh, so. So, would you have like your rosé with all of this, or would you put a pair with something else? So, okay. Uh, everyone's different, hmm. and when it comes to the wine, they always say, "Oh, you need to have a white with a fish or a red with a meat." Yep. It's up to the person eating the food. Mm, mm. I like to have a light pinot or a cab sav with my fish. If I'm having a salmon, that's what I have. Yep. Uh, as for cheeses, if I'm just starting off, I'll have a, a white. Mm. Uh, I think people fail if they start with a red. Yeah. Especially yep. at the start of the night. Mm. You want to ease into it. Yep. Not finish your night off at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think anything that suits your taste, taste buds, mm. and what you'd prefer to have. And again, if you just want to sip it, and just enjoy it, mm. uh, any type of wine would go well with this. Yeah. If you're having a, like, a, a meat, say like a nice piece of meat and vegetable, what yep. would be a great wine to have with a meat yeah, dish? Yeah, definitely. Like a meat dish, like even a, a pasta or lasagna, mm. I, I like to have a heavy red. Yep. So I'd be going for the Shiraz. Yep. Because that, the colour of that, very violet, mm. very deep, very yep. dark, as opposed to the Cab Sav, yeah. which is very light in colour. So when I first started drinking wine, mm. uh, my parents said to me that you need to look at the wine to see if it's got the leg, which is the alcohol content, mm. uh, and also it's going to have flavour. You can see it running down the side of the glass. So is that the legs the where that yeah. runs down, like the runs dribble down. marks? Yeah. So that's got like Good millions well. of legs. It's got <laughs> great legs. Great legs. Um, so I will always definitely drink something with great legs. Yep. I mean, you can go out if you've spent a lot of money on a bottle of wine and it doesn't have any legs, and you've got issues. Yeah. 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 Um, but you can normally tell with the smell as well if it doesn't have any body or you can smell like a balsamic, mm. which just this isn't balsamic. This is definitely not. No. This is the Cab Sav. This yep. is quite light yep. for a Cab Sav. Yep. I call it my Pinot. Mm. We're going to cheers. Yeah. And try it at least. Mm. Nice. It is light. Yeah, it is very mm. light. Mm. Gorgeous. So that's what I like to have. Yep. So if you're going to have like a chicken dish and a fish dish and or, you know, something like that, what would you have? What wine would you pair that with? Well, my favourite's a Riesling. Yep. In the white department. Yes. Deborah uh, Hutton loves your Riesling. She had yes. it on the show. Yes. Loves it. She fell in love with yep. it. Yep. Well, hopefully she will come out here and check out the place. Yeah, absolutely. But the Riesling's mum's favourite. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes through and Graham, my stepdad, he loves a Sabalong. Yep. And it's just weird. Mm. And I hear the word decant all the time. Yes. So tell me a little bit, like, why should we decant? Is it just our reds we decant, or is it all wines? Ah, uh, only the reds. You, you decant your reds, especially if they're an older bottle of wine. So if it's, say, five, ten years old, mm. you want to be able to give it time to breathe. Yep. Uh, and if you don't give it time to breathe and you drink it straight from the bottle, then you're not going to get the full flavour mm. and the full taste that it actually requires. And the difference between decanter and I this bottle, Cab Sav, it's still young. Mm. So I just pour it into a glass. Yep. But if you were going for something older, like a 2000, I mean, if you've got a dinner party, yep. you put in a decanter, it's good theatre. Yeah, yeah. People love it. People feel honoured that you're pouring a wine into a decanter. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we have parties here at the farm, not my parties, but family parties, yep. um, we decanter all the old stuff mm. and we just go through and try them. If we like it, great. If we don't like it, down the sink, try it again. Does red go off? Like how quickly, once you've opened a bottle of red, how quickly, if you're not going to drink it all in one night, can it sit? <laughs> I'm very snobby. <laughs> uh, anything over two days, yep. I won't drink it. Yep. Uh, because it's just, you can smell it. You can smell that it's starting to turn or the acidity, uh, sorry, the, the balsamic. Um, but the best thing about the, the reds mm. is that if you want to make some jus, or in our kitchen here, yep. we make as you, we add the, all the reds. Yeah, yeah. So any reds that we've got from the weekend that we haven't had, uh, and it's past its date, pour into the jus and 
or it using your cooking, so all, as you said, like with correct. the spaghetti bolognese if you have red wine. Or your wine spag, or, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or whatever you're doing, if you're making a spag bowl, you can pour it into there. Mm. As for the um, champagne, we do a champagne jelly here. Oh. So you can use the sparkling rosé for that. Champagne jelly. Mm. Yum. Yeah, very popular on the dessert, uh, dessert, dessert menu. menu. Mm. Because people can actually come out here any is it any t- any day or is it weekends for lunch? Uh, so we're restaurants open Friday through to Sundays. Yep. Accommodation seven days a week. Yep. Um, I mean, if there's people that come out through the week and want an idea for food, mm. we normally give them instructions of some food that we have in the kitchen. Yep. And they can take it up and have a little date there and cook the food. Yep. Coming to summer, we're doing dinners. Mm. Friday nights. Um, not sure how many Friday nights they'll be doing. Um, but doing a Friday night and then a wedding the next day for the guys is yeah, pretty full yeah. on. Yep. Uh, especially when it's just Dan and Graham in the kitchen. So Yeah, yeah. But we want people to come out more. I mean, Sundays are great days out here. Yep. Summertime, bring a crew. Bring a picnic. Yep. Bring you a blanket. Do, you could do anything. You can come yeah. out here. If you want to try our wine and have a cheese platter, mm. the place is yours. Yeah. You can go anywhere. Fantastic. So any bit of grass, take a seat. Have you always wanting to do, always wanted to do wine? Is that your your passion? I'm probably the most unqualified person here. <laughs> um, I learn as I go. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm not a vineyard I'm not qualified. I haven't done any uni degrees. Uh, I've learned from Graham. Mm. Graham's taught me everything that I know to this day, how to spray the grapes, how to maintain them, how to train them. Mm. Uh, because it comes, down, it comes to spraying, if you don't get the right amount of spraying done, at the set days mm. and you miss it, you could lose your crop. Yep. Uh, and we can't allow that. So really I've kind of just thrown myself in the deep end. Mm. Mm. Um, they wanted a hand and I put my hand up for it. And And how long have you been here out at the, at the vineyard? It's between four or five years now. Wow, yep. I think I left the army when I was, it was in 2014. Mm. But then again, the last two years feel like 10. So, so much has happened. Yep over the last two years to, um, to even keep count of what's happening. Mm. Mm. And what do you do on the farm then? Because you, it's, it's, I guess one question is, how much do you grow here every year? It's quite a big farm out here. It is. So last year we got about uh, 10 to 12 tonnage mm. of grapes, um, and that's because we went full production. Yep. As for the work around here, anywhere outside mm. is my bag. Yep. So I work with our, our gardener, Chris, and then myself out in the vines, any of the grass, gardens, edges. Mm. It's just, it's full on. I mean, I've got Chris out here twice a week and then there's me. Yep. And they've got Anne and Graham inside that do all the cooking and the, and the restaurant set up. Uh, Mum does all the wedding planning. Yep. So we kind of have our own little jobs. Yes. Um, and they don't let me into the kitchen do their jobs as I don't let anyone touch my jobs outside. Yeah. Don't touch the vines. <laughs> don't touch the vines, don't touch the grass. Don't use that tractor on that bit of grass because it's too heavy and it yeah. sinks. Like, I want everything roses. looking. Yeah. yeah, don't touch the roses. <laughs> I never liked roses. I, I, the weird thing is I wanted mum to get rid of the roses because mm. they were a pain in the ass to clean up. But now I love them. Oh, yeah. And I will protect those roses like they're my own children. Yes. Because um, yep. basically it is outside yeah. yeah beautiful should we um taste test some of this please amazing what would you food? like to try first oh, um, okay you choose well the Dealer's duff noir, i think you were looking at the duff noir yep which is nice and creamy and you're not going to worry about my hands are you no good you didn't pick your nose with them did you always <laughs> what else am i meant to do with them <laughs> oh you know what it doesn't matter mum's not here no that's she always right. tells me off for putting too much cheese Oh my god, you just want me to put that in my mouth? Yep. Like that. Yep, like that. Whole really? Thing, whole thing. <laughs> We're all watching. <laughs> mm. Yep. But how creamy. Look how creamy mm. it is. Like how creamy it is. Mm-mm. So this is the best, this is our favourite one. So mm-hmm. when we do have a cheese platter at home, this is the first one to go. Because it's just the best. And then, oh, sorry. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm going to try something else because you just um, mm-hmm. smashed that bit of cheese. I did. I actually like the, the Irish cheese. The Irish this blue. One? No, this one. That's the nutty cheese. Mm. Um, so you don't really want to do that one. Are you a blue? You like your blue? Well, I never was uh, to find out that the blue is a mold. Don't forget to have some of your grapes. No, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, have some of that. <laughs> no, that's you. You have oh, that one. Okay. I'm going to try mm. your olives. I mean, that 2016? 
Got nuts, remember? Oh, yeah. Mm. Don't buy it down. Mm. So, not quite. Mm. 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 Work a rep. Yeah, anyway, two sure. reps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are divine. They They're gorgeous. good, aren't they? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know. Do you sell them? There's a live audience want anything? No, yeah, there isn't no, a live audience. No. <laughs> you miss out. We got this. They are beautiful. Yeah. Are you do you actually sell them? Sometimes. Yeah, wow. Mm. Mm. So I can't true. <laughs> that tree right there. Yeah, so no. they're our olive trees. Mm. And they go all around the property. Uh, mm. They're a pain in the pain in the ass to pick though. Oh yeah. So we found like a, grapes. No, so we mm. found a new way. You get an umbrella, you shake it? yeah, and you shake it. Or I put a grocery bag around my neck and climb up on a ladder, and just run my hands down the actual tree, and really? then they fall in. Really? Mm. Really. Cool. Yeah, work smart, not hard. I'm not going to stand there and pull them pull out of the tree. Pull one by one. No, I know. Yeah, we're going to cheers. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And here's to a happy new year. Yes, for it's 2019. That time, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. Um, what's 2019 got in store for you? Hopefully, start off with a holiday. Yes. Hopefully. Greece. Yeah, Greece. <laughs> Mykonos. Yes. I can see that's a word I can say. Mykonos. Mykonos. I can't yep. remember that nutty cheese. <laughs> that's weird. But yes, happy New Year to you. Yeah. It's just around the corner. It is. Literally. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for coming. Thank you. When in Melbourne, the Wine O'Clock Show stays and films at the Olsen Art Series Hotel. A perfect location right in the heart of Chapel Street, Melbourne. This season of The Wine O'Clock Show proudly brought to you by Tom's Cap Vineyard Retreat, Escape to Tom's Cap. Carolyn's First National Real Estate, the number one choice for real estate on the Sunshine Coast. And the Olsen Hotel Art Series, right in the heart of Chapel Street.